Welcome back to Sailing Cedra McClyde. In this episode, we leave Rats Harbor and continue up Clarence Strait into Sumner Strait and up to Baker Point. After a restful night, we deal with a lot of current and our first fog banks of the trip. After some great steady sailing, we round Cape Decision, and once in Chatham Strait, we get exposed to ocean swell again. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're enjoying the series, make sure you hit subscribe so you see the next ones coming up. Good morning from Rats Harbor. Beautiful morning here, it's about 7.30. Um, we finally had some luck, luck with uh, getting crabs. We got uh, nine Dungeness and kept uh, three of them with the regulations. We got one license on board. And it's just a great morning. We're gonna have a nice meal later on. And there's finally a solid breeze blowing out in here in Clarence Strait. Uh, Northwesterly, probably 10, maybe there was a like, 15 knot gust. So we'll see if we get any of the reef, but I think we'll start with full canvas and get underway here. We were able to put sails up right inside the bay, but had to reef as soon as we got out into the strait as the wind strengthened. All right, first time with uh, some good northwesterly wind since we got to Alaska. we got a reef in and we're hauling ass here. We may even want to roll in a little jib. But we're sailing along quick, got the current in our favor. There's a whale around. Things are uh, looking real nice. And there's just a bit of high overcast. Doesn't look like it's really gonna rain. And uh, we got Alice steering, as in the wind vane. All right, good work, Alice. Bunch of cute little birds eating something on the surface here. I've been seeing lots of these guys ever. Gently sailing downwind right now. It's a pretty sweet morning or afternoon now. We had a really nice tack for a while. The wind died for a short while, only maybe only half an hour. We motored a little bit to get to uh, back to a tide line where the ebb goes north and flood goes south, and we were on the other side of it for a little bit, so we just motored up to that. And yeah, now we're just having a nice little uh, chill lunch while the wind hopefully keeps on picking up. We're cruising up into Snow Passage at the northern end of Clarence Strait. We've got a really nice southerly that's built up here after it went calm from northwesterly earlier on. So we're really enjoying this run and we're going about five knots right now. Hydrovane's been doing all the work for the last like five miles or so while we processed all that Dungeness crab we caught this morning. Uh, yeah, so it's a continued wonderful day here in Clarence Strait and we'll be entering Sumner Strait once we're through Snow Passage and then hanging a left and aiming for Chatham Sound, or no, Chatham Strait, not Sound, that's down by Prince Rupert. Chatham Strait is along Baradoff Island. So when Sea Dream of Clyde gets going to around six knots, there's this distinct sizzle, I like to call it, of the uh, weight coming off the boat. So you can you pretty much, you don't even have to look at the speed on the GPS you just know you can hear it coming off the side of the boat. It's coming through snow passage. It's kind of max ebb right now which is around three and a half knots or so. We're going 7.5 knots over the ground. Um, still getting a nice boost here. We were sailing right until just a moment ago but um, there's just a little, little too, the winds are kind of meeting here and there's not a lot of wind and we got this current setting us against the shore so we had to mortar for sure. But uh, making great progress and we're just about to get out of Clarence Strait and into Sumner now. And we're back sailing again on the other side of Snow Passage, the very top end of Clarence Strait. This is the intersection of Clarence Strait and Sumner Strait. And we're seeing mountains of Baranoff Island up ahead. 70 miles as the crow flies. 120 miles as we gotta go, but we're getting there in a couple days. And we're going six knots or so. We've got tons of curtain in our favor here and really good uh, wind angle as well. All kinds of seabirds feeding around here. Screaming along into Sumner Strait, we're going 7.1 knots over the ground. We're on a wing on wing, and we're gonna go beam breach pretty short here. We're cruising. 
cruising along Sumner Strait, looking at the huge mountains that tower over Petersburg. And it's looking back to where we came from. We were having a rocking sail, and then all of a sudden it just stopped. And it was like moving around and in all kinds of different directions. Um, but now there's a little bit of a westerly setting in, and we're about eight miles from Baker Point, and also Port Protection is right around the corner. So there's these two little uh, outposts with apparently 50-ish uh, residents or less in each. So we're gonna head to one of those uh, two for the night. Get a nice, good sleep in there. I'm gonna make some crab cakes. Get a big tub from the Dungeness cooked up. Get panko, garlic. Uh, salt, pepper, and some other spices I'll add in. Uh, but it's nice and cozy and warm down here, so I'm happy to cook while Alex hangs out on the helm in the chilly evening uh, breeze. Wow. We've been sailing and the wind's been slowly but surely dying. We're going about a knot and a half and getting rolled around in this weird waves. So we're gonna putz the four miles we have left. There's a bit of a wind line later on, so maybe we'll be able to sail the last little bit. But it's a beautiful sunset, we've sailed basically the whole way today and it's all good gonna make it uh, we're making it a lot further than we expected we didn't expect to make 50 miles today the wind uh, forecast wasn't as favorable as we thought it would be but here we go we're just approaching Baker Point where we're gonna spend the night a beautiful sunset happening here there's a bit of wind right now, but um, so we're motor sailing, but there's just not these waves that keep coming from both directions and keep knocking the wind out of our sails when we uh, don't have the engine on. So we're just gonna, we're just finishing up the day motoring about uh, three miles in total. Um, but I think we've only really motored about um, five, six miles in total today. And we're traveling, well, we'll have traveled 50 miles today. So pretty, pretty happy with that percentage. Just entering Port Baker, or Point Baker, with a beautiful sunset behind us after a really nice day. So we'll go tie up at the local community dock here. We're in Point Baker, just a little wee village um, on the northern, kind of northwestern tip of Prince of Wales Island. There's a fishing lodge back there, and there's a floating cafe and a floating um, saloon or, or bar. There's also a floating post office down the way as well. And then a bunch of little boats around here and some small houses. Pretty nice uh, cozy spot to spend the night here. It's uh, super peaceful and calm in here. We should get really nice sleep. There's a pretty serious looking fishing boat here. I don't know what kind of fishing they would have been doing, but it could. I think this thing would handle a lot. It's built like a little tank. Yeah. Here's the little entrance into Point Baker. It's pretty straightforward. There's a few shallow spots to watch out for, but easy to get in here. And some more houses across the bay. All right, we're underway out of Baker Point. We have current and wind against us, so we'll see how the morning goes here. Could be a little bit of a slow one. But it's beautiful out here. There's a bit of mist. There's some humpbacks, uh, or it's a humpback feeding just uh, outside the bay here. Sea lions and all that good stuff. Lots of tide stuff around here. You can see all the kind of swirls and upwellings. But we will see how it goes. Just mosey along and see what kind of wind comes up. Pretty funky around here. Lots of, uh, lots of tidal current ripping along. Just been sort of falling sideways mostly. Um, we left over there, um, but we've mostly just gone sideways half a mile. Just a couple of sea lions and cormorants out on that channel marker there. And just to the uh, left of that channel marker is a 16 foot area, which explains a lot of this tidal action. This is pretty cool to be heading to uh, some new places. I Most of the trip so far I've, I've been to, or basically the whole trip I've been to um, I'd already been to the areas we traveled through, but now this is new to me. Lots of beautiful big mountains and different things to see. Port Point Baker was pretty cool. Had a couple of nice folks around. Yeah. Okay, after bobbing around for a bit here, we've uh, starting to make a little bit of 
um, speed through the water. There was that tons of current right off Baker Point um, that we had to fight through. We motored through a bit of it, otherwise we probably would be back there still um, with some help from the wind. And then the wind kind of died off after a little bit of sailing. And somehow the current changed in our favor. Um, once we got to the middle of the passage here and towards some deeper water, it was about a, a knot in our favor now uh, that we were just drifting sideways to when we were in irons. But wind's coming back up here again from the south and we we're underway. Um, I think the current is still setting us favorably south while we tack, so we're making this sort of sideways motion, good. Uh, making good uh, good way over the ground. F the fog's dissipating around us, starting to see the mountains on Baranoff Island. Been a few birds flying around, but pretty uneventful morning aside from that adventure around uh, the shoals at Baker Point. Just sailing through a bit of fog here in Sumner Strait. There's been a few banks drifting around, but if it isn't too, too bad, probably half a mile. I'm just keeping a good listen out for the engines. It's pretty quiet for traffic around here though. Sailing in fog, your world gets so much smaller. I'm just in a little mile radius or something. Uh, with fog all around me, starting to break through it ahead of me here. Got the hydrovane back there, do steering, and Alex is having a nap. Just a nice calm morning. Nice that we're starting to make a bit of progress south now so that we can clear the bottom of uh, Admiralty Island, I think it is, um, and then uh, head on up um, into Chatham Strait um, and along Baranoff Island to Warm Springs Bay. We are about 18 miles from Cape Decision where we'll hang a right and start heading up Chatham Strait. There's some humpbacks around, just really perfect sailing. We're cruising at about four and a half to five and a half knots. We have the current in our favor now and it should work out that we'll reach Cape Decision right when the current is changing to a flood and flooding up Chatham Strait, which we're going up. So it's turning out to be a pretty good day after a little bit of a slow start with those strong currents down by uh, Point Baker. All good now. A fellow sailor in Southeast Alaska. We're bombing towards uh, Decision Pass and Cape Decision, um, which is the separation point between um, Sumner Strait and uh, Chatham Strait. So we're looking forward to rounding the corner here finally and starting to head uh, downwind. We've been tacking all day. It's been pretty good angles overall and lots of uh, current helping us out a bit. Um, but this should be a pretty nice uh, shift. So we don't have the wind in our face so much, it'll feel a lot calmer, though it's not been hectic at all today. So we've made it past Cape Decision and the wind has kind of swung to more westerly. We were hoping it was going to be more of a southerly, southwesterly, but uh, it's making us have an attack a little bit here. There's a little current against us, but I think within about a mile or two or three, um, we're going to be able to do attack and it'll send us straight up Chad Strait. Um, we were thinking about Port Alexander, about 20 miles across the strait on Baranoff Island, but with this uh, more westerly, uh, westerly angled wind, I think we're gonna head up uh, up the coast of uh, Kiu, I think it is, island. Up the island we've kind of been going around for a while now and find an anchorage somewhere up there. There's several to choose from. One called the Mud Hole is a little ways away, but we'll see what the wind and the currents do. Um, it could have us getting there kind of late, but it looks like a bomb-proof anchorage where we could rest and then get going again tomorrow. The air flowing off the Pacific was cool and damp on our faces and this sliver of sun taunted us for hours, refusing to come out from behind the thick layer of marine cloud that was blanking the area. 
Alex enjoying some speedier stuff on the helm. We've got the six knot sizzle back. First time in a little while here. Here it is. You're out in the bottom of Chatham Street. The wind has died on us and it's a pretty significant chop here. So we're mooring a bit. Hopefully uh, it's supposed to turn in north, so this could be sort of the transition time between south and north winds. So if we get some northerly, it might be an okay angle for us. Um, but we're gonna go uh, likely to um, a mud hole in Cape or uh, Port um, Melonberry or something. There's also Table Bay up ahead, but it's a little more exposed, so we might consider it though because it's not too far ahead. But uh, pretty good day all in all. We've made 54 miles over the ground, I think. Um, more like 35 or something um, as a crow or as, as we traveled. Um, we just did a lot of tacking during most of the day. Um, all in all, good day. No rain still. <laughs> So the wind uh, died off here and we're motoring along. We got six miles to go to Port Malesbury. Um, the marine clouds kind of, we're getting to the edge of it now, so we're getting getting some nice light here. It's, um, it's about uh, 10, 17 right now, but still fair light. Um, kind of enough wind to, never mind. The wind is just not quite strong enough to uh, keep the sails full with this chop. So we're keeping them out for now because it is giving us a little bit of a boost. Um, we're cruising along at seven knots right now with the current helping us out. But we should be there into this uh, Port Melsbury in in less than an hour. And then uh, the chop will finally leave then and we can get to our anchorage which is another couple miles in there. After having the motor for about uh, 45 minutes or so, we're getting the sails back up. The waves have come down a bit and the wind has come up. And we're going to be able to sail right to our anchorage. We're coming into Port Malsbury, I think it's called. There's a nice little bit of marine cloud hanging out on this hill here, but we just had an awesome sail for the last hour um, after about 45 minutes or so of um, motoring. But this is just a fantastic way to end a fantastic day. The day started off a little haywire, but uh, with all kinds of current, but it came together nicely with pretty, really dry and well, pretty much sunny weather all, all day. And just a really nice sunset here and, and a nice sail. We're gonna... Though it looks completely dark out in this imagery, we could see just fine actually um, as we mortared into Port Malisbury the last mile or so into a very peaceful anchorage where we set anchor at about 1220 and then had a very peaceful sleep. Coming up next time on Sailing Cedar McClyde, we carry on out of the mud hole and into Clarence Strait where we experience some very light wind but very pleasant sailing all the way up to Warm Springs Bay. In Warm Springs Bay, we enjoy the hot springs, go for a morning canoe, and then go skiing. Wait, what? That's right, we brought our skis with us, so in the next few episodes you're gonna see some skiing action off of the sailboat. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're enjoying the series, make sure you hit subscribe so you'll see the next ones coming up. Bye for now!